In this video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to go to Taiwan. All right, let's go. The first thing you need to know is just a little bit of background about Taiwan. And Taiwan is a lot more than just a small crowded island with electronics factories fueled by boba tea. Yes, there are amazing high mountain ranges, beautiful beaches, stunning national parks, many with hot springs. There's amazing food here and amazing shopping too. So there's something for everyone to see in Taiwan. Now, uh, Taiwan is often confused with China. Uh, is Taiwan China? Is Taiwan part of China? From a traveler's perspective, Taiwan is not a part of China. This is a controversial issue, and so I'm not really gonna dive into the controversy surrounding it, but from a country name perspective, uh, the official name of Taiwan is the Republic of China, ROC, and mainland China is the People's Republic of China. When you're coming to Taiwan, you don't deal with the government of the People's Republic of China, you deal with the government of Taiwan if you need a visa or any of those sorts of things. Now, the other confusing point, just to get out of the way, is that Taiwan and Thailand are not the same place. Thailand is the Southeast Asian country home to mango sticky rice and pad thai. The residents of Thailand are known as Thais. The residents of Taiwan are known as Taiwanese, and so is the food. Number two, to really understand Taiwan, I think you have to understand its history, and this is gonna be the really speedy, condensed version of it. Aboriginals have lived in Taiwan for centuries, but in the area of colonization, the Dutch and the Spanish were the first Europeans to establish colonies here and give it the name Formosa, meaning beautiful. Taiwan became a province of China during the Qing Dynasty in the 1800s. The Qing Dynasty ceded Taiwan to Japan in 1895 after being defeated in the Sino-Japanese War. And so it was during the area of the Japanese colonial time that actually this building was built back here. This is the red building in Ximen. It is one of Taipei's first uh, covered markets. And uh, you'll actually see a lot of construction like this throughout the city and a lot of Japanese influence from those colonial times. Japan ruled Taiwan until 1945. What happened in 1945? Uh, World War II happened in 1945. At the same time, the communists took over mainland China and the previous government of China before the communists or the People's Republic took over, the previous government, they fled from mainland China to here, this island. And that's why this island is called the Republic of China because the former government that was over there came over here and said, this place is the official China and they hope to basically regroup and reassert themselves and then go back and conquer the mainland. So I'm pretty sure the government that's in Taiwan right now has given up on that plan of like regrouping and taking over mainland China. I think they're really just focusing on making Taiwan the best place that it can be. I don't really know because I didn't ask them myself, but that's just how it appears. But either way, this place really has an identity of its own um, formed by these European influences, the Japanese influences, and certainly the influences from the rest of the West, uh, including America, that have been a significant part of uh, Taiwanese culture and the formation of this island. Enough about the past, let's get you oriented today. Taiwan is generally shaped like a potato and it's divided into four general regions. In northern Taiwan, you have Taipei, the capital, where I'm sitting right now, the hub of center and commerce and culture. One third of all people that live in Taiwan live in the city of Taipei. In central Taiwan, the biggest city there is Taichung. It is the second largest city in Taiwan. You'll find scenic mountains and lakes, in particular Sun Moon Lake. Southern Taiwan is known for its beaches. The biggest city in southern Taiwan is Kaohsiung. It is Taiwan's third largest city. It is a significant industrial city, home to a major seaport. Another city to check out in southern Taiwan is Tainan. It's considered like the ancient city in Taiwan, one of the oldest population centers. Tainan is also known as the food city, generally regarded to have some of the best food uh, on the whole island. And the fourth and final region, eastern Taiwan, cut off from the rest of the island by tall mountains, makes this area remote. You'll want to go to eastern Taiwan to see the nature. Let's talk about getting into Taiwan. There are three major airports that you might be flying into in this island. The first one is Taipei Taoyuan International Airport, acronym code TPE. It is 40 kilometers from the city center of Taipei. It's the biggest international airport here. It's where you're gonna find major airlines coming in from North America, Europe, and points afar. The second biggest airport down in the south, Kaohsiung Airport, uh, mostly flights to big cities in Asia. And then the third big airport is also in Taipei, uh, TSA Airport, Songshan Airport. Uh, that one has mostly domestic flights within Taiwan and also flights to a few 
few other close by Asia cities like Tokyo Haneda. The main Taiwanese air carriers are EVA Airlines and China Airlines. Yes, China Airlines is not the flag carrier of mainland China. China Airlines is one of the flag carriers of Taiwan. And with the whole like, is Taiwan China or not? You know, they've been struggling with that name for a long time, debating whether they should change it. That's not a great solution for them. So right now it's definitely China Airlines. The fifth thing to know is about getting around Taiwan. And one of the best ways to get around the country is by the relatively new high-speed rail or the bullet train that they've built from Taipei in the north to Kaohsiung in the south. It is about 200 miles. It'll take you just about 90 minutes on the fastest train. Fares are about $50 US for adults. You can get a 30% discount if you book them up to five days in advance. Uh, there's also a slow speed train that'll take you along the eastern side of the island. Not as fast, but it is more scenic. Uh, if you're thinking about driving a car, I'd advise you not to, like don't rent a car. Driving can be pretty rough and pretty aggressive around here. If you wanna get around by car that you will need if you wanna go into like the national parks or things like that, um, rent one with a driver. Um, it's a fairly common practice around here. Any hotel you're staying at would be happy to give you advice on some chauffeur and driver services. We've done it before. It's a great way to get around for the day in the countryside. The sixth thing to know before we go to Taiwan is about the weather and in the summer, probably the spring and the fall, it's generally kind of hot and humid. Uh, in the winter, it can be pretty cool and pleasant. The north, where Taipei is, is generally uh, rainier. The south, it has less rain, known for its beaches. It can actually get cold in Taiwan, up in the mountains. It can get down in like the 40s Fahrenheit. When it's windy, it's actually kind of nice. Maybe not for my audio, but that keeps the heat away. You're not really gonna need any like super cold weather clothes. Though I will say, uh, if you look out at uh, the people on the streets in the winter when it's a cold day, they're gonna be all bundled up because they're used to really hot. And so when it cools down a little bit, they're wearing like parkas like they're in Antarctica. And, and then I, I walk out like this. Um, but uh, if you're from a place that is even slightly cool uh, when you come here, you know, uh, this sort of short sleeves and, uh, you know, open legs are probably gonna be your friend. Though if you're going out into the, for hiking or things like that, make sure you bring some mosquito repellent. Even in the city, they run around here a lot because of the heat and humidity. Seventh thing to know is about money. And in terms of expenses, we've talked a lot about Japan. So let's compare Taiwan to Japan. Uh, Taiwan is significantly cheaper than Japan to do the same things and have the similar experience. If you're eating at a street stall, you might spend a hundred Taiwan dollars or $3 US for a meal out there. If you're eating at a mid-priced restaurant, uh, like fast food restaurant, maybe double that. Call it 200 Taiwanese dollars or $6 US for a really good bowl of noodles. If you're eating at a high-end restaurant, might be more, might be 500 Taiwanese dollars for your meal if it's a really swanky one. You can get really high-end and luxurious here. You don't really have to though. Tipping isn't generally practiced um, around uh, Taiwan, so you don't need to carry any extra money for those um, annoying tips. The eighth thing to know before we go to Taiwan is about shopping and one of the most unique places to shop in Taiwan is in the open air market. Some in the day, some at night, but vendors set up everywhere on the sidewalks. Um, if you're in an open air market and there's no price posted, you can totally haggle. The phrase you want to know is, Taiguela, it's too expensive. If you see a price posted like you're in a department store, electronics store, those are non-negotiable prices. Expect to pay the posted price. If you do negotiate a price in a street market, uh, that's the cash price. Uh, most of the street vendors won't take credit cards, so have enough cash with you so you can actually pay them. My favorite thing to bring back from Taiwan is tea. The premium tea in Taiwan is truly delicious. And you know what OC Girl brought back from this trip? A teapot for the premium tea. So how do you know where the street markets are for shopping? Well, if you're wandering the city and you see lanterns, that's a surefire sign, but most of them don't have lanterns. A new thing a lot of markets are doing is they're putting up like digital entry gates to tell you what the street is. So if you see like an entry gate at the front of the street, that's a pretty good one to go down. Often they're the ones that are just the busiest or Google Maps is your friend, you know, shopping street, night market. Find awesome places to shop. Chris, thank you. Bye. Number nine, hotels in Taiwan can really range from uh, really seedy to really amazingly luxurious. Mattresses in hotel rooms are generally hard, and I think it comes from the Asian tradition of like sleeping on a wood board. Don't worry, you're not gonna have a wood board, but you are gonna have a firm mattress. If you're looking for a soft, plush Western mattress, then Probably the Western chains, Mary Hilton Hyatt, are gonna be your best bets for that. Though do know that the Western chains um, are gonna be 
two to four times the price of what you would pay for a local chain. So if you want the local experience, you know, check out some of the local chains or go somewhere in the middle. Maybe check out some of the Japanese chains that are here. That's a hotel I was staying at on this trip, the Mitsui Garden Hotel in Taipei. Um, kind of like mid price and mid in the middle, not run down and seedy, not amazingly luxurious. $200 a night is what I paid for a very centrally located hotel here in Taipei. Confusing point about the hotels is that they can have different names. They can have one name in Chinese and then another name in English. And so uh, the locals may only recognize it by the Chinese name and not the English name. So if you're coming from the airport or you're coming around town, uh, make sure you have the hotel name written in Chinese. Most hotels, once you get there, will often have a card that you can get from them. It's like a take me to card that you can show to a taxi and it'll say in Chinese, take me to my hotel. This is the address. Number 10, let's talk a little bit more about mosquitoes. You already know there's a lot of them and so you need to protect yourself from them and get some mosquito repellent. If you didn't bring any with you, that's okay. You'll find them at like nearly every drugstore in Taiwan. Uh, Watson's and Cosmed are probably some of your best, but you know what? Um, Cause if you don't, these are the days that we didn't, you know, we look and mosquito bite, mosquito bite, mosquito bite. They are just all over and it's hot in the summer. And so you don't want to cover up, but you also don't want a lot of mosquito bites. They also sell, if you do get bites, they also sell things uh, at the drugstores that are like mosquito bite um, itch reduction. And they actually work really well, not just to reduce the itch, but like actually reduce the whole mosquito reaction. So if you do get bitten by a lot, head to one of the drugstores and get some mosquito itch cream and then get yourself some repellent for the next day. You should know about the power that they use here in Taiwan. It's 110 volts, 60 hertz, two prong plug, same as used in the US. So if you're coming from the USA, you're good to go with your electronics. If you're coming from elsewhere, you may need an adapter. And by the way, I am standing here in front of Guanghua Digital Plaza. This in Taipei is the largest electronics marketplace all under one roof and the nearby Sintrend Mall. If you are into electronics or computers or things like that, you'll definitely want to check out these two malls. Let's talk about the food in Taiwan and they love to eat here because food is everywhere. I mean, you know how I know that they love to eat in Taiwan. In their national museum, the two most popular things in the national museum, a rock that's shaped like a piece of pork and a cabbage that's a piece of jade that's shaped like cabbage. Like two rocks that look like food is what they put up as the things to, to show. So they love their food here. All right, so what should you eat when you are in Taipei? Popcorn chicken, one of the like national dishes. Uh, chicken that is deep fried in small pieces with some spicy chili powder on top. Uh, something I've been seeing recently on this trip and like every night market is sweet potato balls. These are deep fried sweet potato, but not deep fried all the way through like a French fry. They're like soft in the middle and pretty tasty. Um, and you know, to drink, you should definitely get a milk tea. Mm. It's like the national dish, national drink of Taiwan, I would say. You can get it without boba, or you can get it with boba, these tapioca balls at the bottom, then they give you a big straw and you drink and the tapioca comes up and you chew it. Uh, if you're eating out in the small restaurants in the country, um, they may only sell food and they may not sell drinks. Um, and so in that case, you'll wanna like bring a drink with you to the small restaurant to make sure you actually have something to drink. And uh, if you're with kids, you know, definitely ask for kids bowls because nearly every restaurant will have them and they all seem to be these same ones, these like bowls from, from Ikea. At sit-down restaurants, when all your food's been delivered, they'll typically bring you your receipt or your bill. This is how they gave it to us at this restaurant. How much was this meal? 1,221 Taiwanese dollars. They will generally not take your payment at your table. Generally, your payment is over at a counter as you leave. So um, just because they bring your bill doesn't mean they're, they want you to leave. That's how it is in a restaurant in the U.S., right? Like when that bill comes to your table and they're like, please, please pay and please leave now. Don't feel like you need to leave because you got your bill, but if you get something that looks like this, um, know what that is, take this to the cashier, pay, and then you'll be on your way. For dessert in Taiwan, definitely try out some shave ice. You'll find seasonal fruits on display. This one's got kiwi, watermelon, and banana. Mango is also some of my favorite. You'll find that in the summer. The 13th thing to know is about drinking and the legal age to drink alcoholic beverages in Taiwan is 19. 
Um, but Taiwan does not really have a heavy drinking culture, so you won't really find people drunk out on the streets, uh, and you don't really find that many bars. I, I think the number of bars in Taiwan is outnumbered by boba tea shops, likely 100 to 1, like 100 tea shops to one bar. Uh, and so in Taiwan, you know, if you're hanging out with a new acquaintance and they say to you like, hey, would you like to go get a drink? They are more than likely talking about tea instead of uh, a beer or alcoholic cocktail. Well, fellow explorers, the last thing to know is I've got more videos. If you're planning a trip to Taiwan, you might enjoy some more of my videos you'll find here right on the screen. And there's also links in the description below. If you're planning a trip to Taipei, definitely check out my city guide. You'll find it right, right here. Uh, and as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.